Praise the Lord. So several years ago, I had a, um, a thoracic surgery and they attempted to do the surgery robotically to remove a cyst the size of a quarter from my chest, a cyst tumor. They didn't know exactly what it was. Um, and um, they were unable to get to it robotically because a couple years previously, I had the same surgery robotically and that doctor, um, I guess you could say it was a botched job. He punctured my lung, it collapsed. Um, it took a year for me to be able to breathe without um, being in pain. That doctor also, um, with one of the robotic arms, like stabbed my back from the inside, going in my back. So that was painful. It also took a year to fully heal um, to where there is no pain. And um, so the second surgery I had where they were unable to do it robotically, it was mostly because there was so much scar tissue from the first surgery. So it was a different doctor the second time around, and he said he scraped as much of the scar tissue um, off as possible, um, but he was unable to do the surgery robotically. So he had to remove part of one of my ribs to be able to get in and um, remove the cyst. Um, it turned out to be a bronchial cyst. And anyway, so it was an all day surgery. I was one of the first surgeries early that morning. And when I woke up in my room in the hospital, I remember looking directly at the clock and it was like three o'clock, 3 p.m. And all of a sudden, uncontrollably, uncontrollably, I just had this loud outcry. I mean, I started screaming at the top of my lungs so loud. I was crying out, um, oh, God, help me. Well, the thing is, they forgot to give me the epidural. So... Um, I was in excruciating pain. I had no pain medication. It felt like I was being stabbed to death over and over again. Um, and the nurses, they all rush in and they're like, what is going on? Like, you shouldn't feel anything at all. You should be completely numb. You should have no feeling right now in your chest and... They're just dumbfounded, and I'm looking at the clock, crying out, screaming, God, help me, Lord, please have mercy on me, Jesus, help me. Um, like maybe every 10, 15 minutes, um, no one could help me. And at one point, all the nurses left, um, and I was in the room by myself, crying out to God like, um, just screaming at the top of my lungs because that's all I could do. Um, the pain from having the chest tube in, the pain from them removing part of my rib, the pain from them scraping all that scar tissue off my insides from the previous surgery I had, the pain from where they removed the cyst. Um, it was awful. I mean, there are times where I'd but I had a bit, I would bite down really hard on my teeth just to, oh, just to be able to, you know, deal with the pain. I was trying everything. Um, I mean, my aunt at one point, maybe like a half hour after I woke up, she came into my room and I was screaming, Aunt Mary, help me. They won't help me. And she got upset and she turned around and she left. She walked out of the room because she couldn't um, see me like that. One nurse came in um, finally after like 40 minutes um, and I just 
said, can you please pray for me? Please, at, just at least pray for me. If you won't help me, just pray for me. And she did. She grabbed my hand and she kind of hid, put her back towards the door so no one could see her pray for me. And she did pray for me. Um, maybe about 10 minutes after that, um, a couple nurses rush in the room. They run in the room and they said, um, um, they forgot to give you the epidural. That's why you feel everything. And we're giving you morphine now. And, you know, they hooked up the IV and, um, within a few minutes, I felt the morphine kick in and I was like, Oh, thank God. Like it's, it's still, it was still painful. Morphine, it doesn't do that good of a job, but it, it didn't feel like I was being stabbed to death anymore. There was like a relief to it, right? Well, so why did I just tell you this story? Um, let's look at Matthew chapter 13 verses 49 through 50. The King James Version states, So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The Easy English Bible, for the sake of this um, video, states, This is what will happen when the world's time comes to an end. God will send his angels and they will put wicked people in one place and they will put God's righteous people in a separate place. The angels will throw the wicked people into the great fire. There, those people will weep and they will bite their teeth together. So, reason number 17 of why someone should choose not to go to hell is because when someone who chooses to go to hell um, goes to hell, they will weep and they will bite their teeth together. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth in hell. This reminds me of my experience after my surgery, waking up and feeling like I was being stabbed to death in my chest over and over and over again. And there was nothing I can do about it. I was screaming and crying out to God. I was asking the nurses to help me. No one could help me, you know, for those 45 minutes because they didn't know what was wrong with me. So I literally just had to sit there and feel like I was being tortured almost to death. Um, my aunt couldn't help me. Like I said, she turned around and walked out. There was no one to help me. Like I had to just bear it and just cry out to God. Um, there was nothing else I could do. There was... And then finally, after like 45 minutes, relief came. The nurse prayed for me and they um, gave me morphine. They found out what was wrong, gave me morphine. That brought relief. Well, in hell, there is no relief. In hell, there is no one grabbing your hand and pray for you to pray for you while you're crying out in agony and pain and suffering. There's no one that you can call for relief. There's you can't you can call on God all you want to. He's not going to come and um, give you relief. It's a final judgment. And you know, it doesn't say there um, wicked people, what, which are the wicked people who don't choose, um, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and do, and does the will of God. Um, it doesn't say there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for a hundred years and then they'll cease to exist. No, it just states matter of factly, those people will weep and they will bite their teeth together, period. There, it doesn't say relief will come, okay? Um, like in my situation, I got relief. I ended up getting prayer. Um, I survived it. 
it only lasted like 45 minutes okay it's not gonna last 45 minutes in hell it's gonna be we don't know how long it's gonna be is it gonna be just for eternal eternal um suffering just constant um till forever forever and ever and ever i don't know will it last um a thousand years a hundred thousand years 500 a billion years i don't know but it's gonna it's gonna last a very long time if not indefinitely and there will be no relief it will be torture you will be crying out every person that goes to hell will be crying out in agony it says right there it says there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth um what does it mean um to weep or to wail it means to express sorrow grief or anguish anguish by outcry so there will be constant expression of sorrow grief and anguish it's not something that anyone will be able to hold in it will be so unbearable that you will have to express it with an outcry okay no one has to choose to spend eternity that way no one has to choose to live in such unbearable sorrow grief and anguish by outcry that it, it's it's a choice that yes it is your own but it's a choice that doesn't have to be made no one is forcing anyone's hand to go to hell okay it's not something the lord wants you to do it's not something um the lord wants to see you um live through for eternity or a very long time the lord created you in your mother's womb right he wants you to live out the wonderful will he has planned for you and hell is not that will if anyone chooses hell you are stepping off under your own unction stepping off and away the lord's will for your life onto your own path your own will and walk and choosing the path to hell that is your choice if someone chooses hell, they are choosing to suffer with sorrow, grief, and anguish that is so unbearable. They will be wailing. They will be crying out, and no one will be listening. They will beg for mercy. They will beg for relief, and that mercy and relief will not come. Okay? Choose a relationship with the God who created you. Choose to spend eternity with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Choose eternity with the Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, and the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Choose not to suffer in the agony of sorrow, grief, and anguish in hell. God bless.